So basic floating. Let me show you what's up here. Just before I get going, though, let me uh, in let me let you in on let me let you in on something. <laughs> the perils of not editing. Uh, I've got a. I just threw in um, some uh, text, just a quick paragraph of text into the body area of my page there. No big deal. Just some Lori Mipsum. You can go and grab whatever text you want. And I also threw a graphic down on my desktop on the same or within the same directory as my HTML page. Really, I should have a folder there and all that kind of junk. But again, down and dirty, right? So what I want to do is I want to show you basic floating. And I'm going to show you basic floating with a graphic first. And then I'll show you some basic floating with a div. So what I'm going to do here is right at the beginning of my text here, I'm going to go ahead and insert a graphic here. So open angle bracket IMG space SRC equals and then in quotes, just the name of my uh, graphic there, droid dot PNG. Something like this close quote, close bracket. Of course, if you have a folder set up or anything like that, you got to make sure you're pointing to your, your graphic there. But that's no big deal. This is no web design uh, or an HTML course. This is more about floating, right? So you should hopefully know that already. And when I head back to Chrome and refresh, this is what I get. So I now have the graphic sitting over on the left-hand side just before the first word in my paragraph, right? Okay, cool. That's the default, right? No big deal. Okay, I'm just going to hide Chrome here and go back to my HTML page. Now what I want to do is I want to try and get the text to wrap around the graphic. And you know, this is something that I get asked about all the time. How do I get the text to wrap around? So I want the text to be up towards the top of the graphic in there. Well, we have to float the graphic. And we can float the graphic either to the left or to the right. And of course, this is going to involve some CSS. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and create a new CSS rule within my internal style sheet. Again, I'm not using an external style sheet. This is all down and dirty, right? So I'm going to call this dot IMG controller, right? Open curly bracket, and I'm going to type in float, full colon, space, and I'm going to say float left. So we can float left and we can float right. Um, finish it off with a semicolon and then a closing squiggly bracket as such. And then what I need to do is I need to connect my object, my HTML element, my, my image, my graphic with the image controller. I have to put it under control of this guy here. So this is a class rule, right? If you know about your CSS selector types. So what I'm going to do is maybe I'll go after the SRC stuff after the closing quote there, put in a space, class equals open quote, and then uh, don't forget, you don't want to put in the period there, just the name of the rule, IMG controller, something like this, close quote. That should do the job there. Save this guy up, head on back to Chrome and refresh, Command R here on the Mac side, Control R, on the PC side, and this is what we get. So now what we have is the graphic floating over onto the left side of the browser window, and any content that appears below the graphic now wraps up or it wants to wrap up onto the same line as the graphic is sitting on. Does that make sense? This is a really, really simple down and dirty example, but I hope it's kind of getting the point across. And obviously, as you can see here with my sample files, I'm not about creating killer design here with you or anything like this. I'm more about making sure that you get the fundamental principles of how all this works. I'll leave it up to you to go and design a really cool web page using the principles that we talk about, right? So hopefully that's all cool. Now check this out. I'm going to head back to my code here just for a sec, and I'm going to find my, my rule that you and I just created, the IMG controller. And instead of floating this guy to the left, I'm going to float him to the right, something like this. Save this guy. Head back to the web browser and refresh. And now we have the object, in our case, the graphic now floating over on the right-hand side. So I hope this is working for you. Now, what happens when we apply a float to an object? We can apply floats to pretty much anything graphics and paragraphs and divs and tables and all kinds of cool stuff. When we apply a float to an object, though, what happens is that item is taken out of the normal flow of the document 
and it's going to be shifted as far as possible either to the right or to the left of our layout. Now, because the the viewable area inside my browser window is my, my outermost container, I don't have any nested divs or containers or anything like that, that's why the graphic shows up way over on the far right or way over on the far left. So hopefully that's all good. Okay, now the only other thing I want to mention here with you before we move on is you, whenever you're floating objects inside your layouts, you always have to set a width for that floated item unless it's a graphic. So in other words, I'm going to show you a div in about 30 seconds. We have to set a width for that div, otherwise it's not going to work for us. So any other object that we want to float other than a graphic has to have a width set for it. Let's go and check out a div here. So I'm going to head back to my code. Let's see here. I am going to, I'm trying to decide exactly how to show you this here. I'm going to get rid of my graphic. I'm going to toast out my graphic there. Right out of that, that um, first line of text there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in a div here instead. So I'm going to type in div and I'm going to give him an ID. So ID equals and help if I could type. There we go. We get it eventually. Oh, what do we want to call this guy? Call it, I don't know, quick example. Right? And then don't forget to close your div like that. And then if you want, you could throw some text into your div if you wanted to. I'm going to leave mine empty for the moment. And then what I'll do next is I will head up into my internal style sheet. I'm just going to add on another rule here. So it's going to be an ID selector now. So number sign and then the name that we gave our ID selector, in our case, call out. Hopefully all good. Okay. And let's see here, open squiggly bracket, and I'm going to type in width, full colon space. I uh, want to make this guy say 50 px, semicolon, height, full colon space. Am I going too fast here for you? I hope I'm not. I'm just kind of zipping along here. And what else do we want to do? Do you want to do a background color? Let's do background red. And you want to put a border on it? Border, full colon space, one pixel, solid. I'm using a little uh, little bit of CSS shorthand here to speed it up a little bit. Uh, black or whatever color you want. Semicolon there. And then I'm going to throw in my float. Float. Let's float this guy on the left. There we go. Something like that. Alrighty, I think that just about does it. Don't forget to close your squiggly bracket there on that guy. I think we're looking good here. Let's save this up. Back over to your browser. Refresh. All right, there's our div now floating there over on the left-hand side. Now, you might be sitting there going, well, what would it look like if there wasn't a float on it? Well, just head back into your code and remove that float property just for a sec. So head back into the callout. Uh, CSS rule and remove the float there and then refresh your browser and see what you'll get. See, this is what I meant about the content below. So by default, with with block level elements like paragraphs and divs and images and things, is they all want to sit on their own line, right? As opposed to inline elements like list items or spans, you know, things like that, hyperlinks. So these guys all want to sit on their own line. But if I come along and I tell an object to float to the left, in my example, then what's going to happen is the, the content, the block level elements that once appeared below now appear on the same line. That's the idea. So this object here, my red div, is taken out of the normal flow and now kind of tucks itself up into the into the left side there. So hopefully that's all cool. Does that make sense for you? You can, of course, add on some additional properties if you want. Uh, maybe I'll do a quick, um, how about a margin right of five pixels, you know, something like that, right? I can increase the size of my of my object if I want, my div, maybe to, you know, 100 pixels square, something like that. Or, you know, I think you get the idea, right? Or what I could do is I could throw in some text. Jeff's uh, down and dirty example. You know, something like this. 
There we go. Something like that. Anyway, I think you get the point here. I think you get the idea. So this really is sort of a, an extremely basic, uh, extremely simple introduction to the concept of floating. I hope it's working for you. I hope it's uh, making sense for you. Of course, don't forget you can float to the left or to the right however you want to pull it off. Okay, so if you want, you can pause things up. You can practice that for just a little bit. And then how about you and I start getting a little bit more complex? Let's check it out.